I come from a village called Ballylifen in North Donegal, which is um, a beautiful, long, curved strand at the bottom of it, about half a mile down to the Atlantic. And um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, yeah. You know, um, when you have a lot of things to do, you make a list of them, and you think, shit, I'm going to start with the biggest task. And once that's out of the way, everything will be easier. This is called the biggest task. Thinking of the tasks awaiting me, I thought I'd begin with the biggest, the burial of the elephant. Admittedly a calf, though bigger and heavier than a pig. I flat one huge ear, then the other, remembering Wally's skill with a football, dribbling it through the feet of the laughing boys, trumpeting when he scored a goal, and the way he let the dog ride him, barking as he gathered speed down the hill to the sea where they'd splash in. Who would have wanted to poison him? The film crews that arrived at the gate begging to film him? The lady poet who hung around the house scribbling in her notebook, clearly at work on an epic? Or the sculptor moulding his soft lead? Weigh all these against his murderer. Where was the singer with his protest song? or the eco-terrorist who'd revenge him. Why did the police not even believe me? I was surprised the gentlemen in white were in scent to put a tight coat on me. I decided it had to be the Strand, the far end near the ruined castle. I hired a digger and his driver who lifted poor Wally into my trailer and the boys came to say goodbye to him. As did a crowd that gathered, including a piper, sounded a slow air. We dug a hole and pushed him in, then covered him. The boys laid a circle of stones on top. Then we stood around till the tide rolled in. I went home to my talisker. The rest of my task took bloody weight. <laughs> Here's the poem I said was a uh, cross between Kafka and Clint Eastwood. The insurance agent. He rode along sideways, two feet hanging down, the same sight of the white mare who held her head high as she trotted through the cactus-filled valley where sidewinders slithered underfoot. An ambitious vulture hovered overhead. A coyote howled in the distance. He ignored them both and pulled out a stick of chorizo, which he gnawed on, while letting his binoculars show him what lay ahead. It was a crashed plain spread out there in the desert, seats, bodies thrown everywhere, although bones would better describe the last and the sun glinted off its fuselage. He dismounted, took out his notebook, walked around, turning over the half-devoured corpses and making entries, till he had enough. Then he got back on the mare, a leg each side this time. This is my elegy for Seamus Heaney. I went to the um, funeral up in Balahi in County Derry, which went pretty much like you were going to hear. It's called Into the Air. Um, it's a famous poem of Seamus where he talks about the music coming from fairies. Uh, I think it's called The Given Note that a fisherman remembered in. Anyway, into the air. I think I'll forget the con-celebrated mass around your coffin. The way those priests claimed you as a starry one of their own. 
And the high choral singing meant to lead you through the diamond studded gates of heaven where you'd sign books for God. I'll forget too the way that crow of a bishop had to have the last word by croaking out some blasted Latin hymn, although you liked Latin, straight after your piper played an unearthly slow air to guide your coffin down into that hole in the ground in Belahi, your own place, where two nights later a harpist was found playing to you in the dark as if you'd invited her there to set everything right. I'll remember that and the piper's lament and your dairy voice and your laugh and yes, maybe a poem or two. Elegy for the Moon Man Oh, Neil Armstrong, I met you in Shropshire in some arts retreat. I was there on a college project. You were on tour giving talks about your dance on the moon. I never heard you, too busy drinking and playing table tennis so fiercely I concussed myself on a metal pipe. <laughs> Next morning I had to leave the lecture to puke. I went to the bar for a water and there you were on a bar stool sipping pink gin. You smiled, asked who I was, then said you were Neil Armstrong, the moon man. I sat and you told me all about the moon. But first you asked if I could drive. I couldn't, and you laughed, advising me to learn to fly first, as you did. And you flew far. When you took the eagle down to the tranquil sea, what were you thinking? You sat there for hours before descending to bounce on the moon, with buzz bouncing too. You ordered another gin, got me a second water, then darkened and said, the moon fucked me up. It fucked up all of us who walked on it, looking back at that blue ball. How do you think it feels to be so far away? When I got home, I wanted to return there but I knew I never would. It kept some of me though. I'm really up there still. And when I die, my ghost will fly to my footprints and I'll haunt the moon. Inquisition Lane is set in, the poem Inquisition Lane is set in Sevilla, my favorite city in Spain. And where I was staying in the old gypsy quarter, I was having a, a drink and some tapas one day. I saw that the street going down to the river was called Inquisition Lane. And I remembered the whole Inquisition had, it, had its headquarters in Seville. Inquisition Lane. Last night, I walked down Inquisition Lane to the bank of the Guadalquiver. I'd eaten fried chicken with garlic, grilled lamb's kidneys, and drunk a bottle of Ramon Bilbao Rioja Crianza. No one had tortured me for my lack of faith in the guilted Madonna or the cross-carrying Christ. No one was going to throw me in the river minus my thumbs, fingers, or testicles. I'd even watched Barcelona win in silence. They were as popular as Protestants in Seville. Inquisition Lane was dim but not dark. The moon hung low above it, and swallows darted about over my long-haired head. I heard the faint sound of flamenco singing. I reached the river, and saw a boat there. Without thinking, I jumped in. The oars moved through the water by themselves and brought me to Inquisition Castle, which had reassembled itself on the riverbank 
and welcomed me into its dark basement.